Hello, it's Caitlin, and today we're going to make some shoes. Okay, y'all, I am insanely proud of this. So, I spent the last several months making slippers. So, yes, this is actually all embroidered. It's um, Berlin wool work. So, it is I use cruel wool embroidery thread yarn. It's embroidery stuff. And it's C-R-E-W-E-L. It's cruel. And so, yeah, I actually made these specifically to match a wrapper of mine. Um, the wrapper of fabric I have specially printed to uh, mimic an original. And so it ha it's mostly blue, and then it has these um, Greek key coming down, uh, contrast fabric coming down the front and around the hem and on the sleeves and such. Um, and so this is essentially the contrast that I made. And so it will perfectly match that wrapper. Uh, I spent a lot of time and money on that wrapper. I figured I should be wearing some shoes that are, you know, pretty special to go with it. So um, I have made my own shoes before. Um, as far as slippers, so to make this pattern, um, I do have a, every lady her own shoemaker, a reprint of it. It has a pattern for an upper slipper, and so I started with that, but of course that wasn't my size, so I took apart one of my modern shoes that was falling apart anyway, and I couldn't really wear anymore, so I took that apart, kind of got the sizing, and then I kind of mesh the two together and then I made a couple of examples so I made one out of um, leather and then one out of um, silk so I do have two pairs of slippers I have made with this pattern and that told me this pattern worked and so then I transferred it onto I think this is 20 gauge or 20 mesh I don't even know what this stuff is called it's it's like needlework canvas and yeah, I, I think it was 20, 18 or 20 gauge, which just means how, how many holes there are per inch. I forget exactly how that worked. Um, but yeah, so I have some beautiful uppers that I'm terrified to cut into now. <laughs> um, but I also have a sole pattern. So I the this one had a sole pattern and of course it didn't quite fit my foot and it was a straight last, which meant there was no right or left foot. Um, so I, again, the same shoe I was cutting apart, I kind of made a left and a right, kind, kind of based off the original one, so it has a square toe, it's kind of shaped the same, but it's a left and a right, um, so yeah, it's, I have these, I have an upper, I'm going to do some research to figure out exactly what they were aligned with, whether it would be silk or wool or canvas or what not. I'm going to need to know what I can use for an inner sole because this is not going to be very sturdy and I don't really plan on wearing these outside. It's going to be a house slipper. However, at least have some support. Um, I have various supplies that I can use for that. So I think the next step is going to be me reading through this entire book, which is not very big so it shouldn't take very long, to figure out what my next step is going to be. This should be interesting. Um, yeah, so I actually did three or four years ago make Berlin wool work slippers. Um, and I thought I had made it up to where it was going to fit my foot. And I, I got it to fit lengthwise. The issue is I have a very wide foot. And so I could not cram my foot into it after I spent all that work making those slippers. And so that was frustrating. But um, I'm going to redo those eventually too, as in make a whole new set. Because I have plenty of the canvas. So. I can just keep making slippers to go with my wrappers. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to have to do some reading and I will see you after I figure out what to do next. Okay, so it's actually the end of the day. I um, was very lazy today. I haven't gotten much done at all. I read the entire book through though. Um, turns out that there's not much of slipper, slipper making in there. It's just shoe making, which is yeah, not helpful. So not well, it's somewhat helpful. It's not really helpful though. So I ended up looking at some museums and found some Berlin work slippers, so I kinda have an idea what they're what they're made of. It looks like they're all lined in silk, or at least the three examples that I saw. I mean that's not exactly the biggest um 
sample size, but it is what it is. So what I think I'm going to do now is, um, well, actually, I went through all my stuff, and I found my upper pattern that I made and the sole pattern. And so I think what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and cut an upper pattern of um, lining and an inner lining. So my lining, I'm going to use some silk um, because it's blue, and I saw several of the originals had a colored silk that matched the um, design on it. And since this goes with the blue wrapper, and I think the shoe should have a little bit more blue in them than just the orange, I think that'll work really nicely. Um, it's a very thin silk, just to make it opaque, I might make two layers of the silk. Um, it's very thin, I'm not really worried about it being too stiff. Um, but even just to stiffen it up a little bit, I have some cotton here. I'm thinking I might starch it and make it really stiff. I had some cotton, like, drill, but I've used it all up, so I don't have anything really stiff that would be really good for this. So I think what I'm going to do... My goodness, Kitty. Mm -hmm, my apologies. So what I think I'm going to do is cut, for each slipper, cut one of the inner lining and starch it heavily and cut two of the silk. And then I could probably start putting this together somewhat. Um, all, the one, all the ones I saw, the, um, there was no seam on the top of the upper. It was all bound in a ribbon, um, which I think I have some silk ribbon. I know I have some, I do. I actually specifically bought some black several months ago, half inch ribbon for this project. So I have that. So it will be bound in black, which will work. And so I think I can go ahead and cut those out and then worry about the binding and then we can talk about soles and that sort of thing. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do real quick now that I've gotten some motivation for this project. So yeah, I'll see you when that's pages very quickly. Um, I have not bound them yet, as you can see, but I did cut out the, um, looking out the window, honey. I did cut out the actual slipper part, the embroidered part, and I went ahead and finished up the um, back edges. So I stitched those in, and I stitched the lining in the other way so you don't see a seam on either side of the shoe, which is exactly what I'm looking at on the originals. And so now I think the next step is to bind the edges. I have some lovely black silk ribbon. I think we'll look great with that. So yeah, I shall go do that. Okay, sorry for the weird lighting situation. I'm having to film on the ironing board today because the workspace looks like this. So yeah, windows mean weird light. But I am basically done with the upper. So this upper is completely done. Um, the ribbon is put on and then tack down on the underside so it looks really good. Um, this one I just did the first step which is just stitching it down right here um, right on the edge of the ribbon which is right on the edge of the embroidery just making sure that when I flip it up I don't see any of the white part I always see is embroidery. And so what I'm going to do next is just trim this edge up. You see my silk is quite ravelly and then yeah I'll just flip it right over and stitch just to hide these stitches here. Um, the nice thing about using ribbon instead of actual fabric is that they lay, I don't need to like flip it over to hide a raw edge, I can just use the edge of the ribbon and that works out really well. So yeah, this is what it will end up looking like. But yeah, I'm really liking how they're looking. Um, I really like how the Greek key looks on the side. I love that I lined them in blue. I think it brings out the blue here. It's a little bit of hint of blue. And the wrapper is blue, so I think it'll work really, really well with all of that. But yeah, I think I shall finish this very quickly and then see you back to work on the sole. So both uppers are done. They're looking really good. Um, I also went ahead and um, did a basting stitch right where the embroidery starts through all four layers. Um, that way I have a stitching line here. That way when I sew it onto the sole, I have a guide to where I'm not sewing into the embroidery but not missing it and seeing the white. So um, I also took the soles and I traced the actual sole pattern on top of them so the excess is just all seam allowance. And I'm thinking I I think I have some leather machine needles and I might stitch these pieces together by machine. 
um, maybe that'll make it a little bit more sturdy and then that way I won't have to stitch through leather by hand so I'm going to pin this together and attempt that and we'll see how that works and because after I attach these two pieces um, then it's just I have an inner sole to make and that's about it so slipper one is complete. It's the left slipper, or I say complete. I still need an inner sole. Um, I went ahead and stitched it on the um, vintage machine, uh, just because it's a hand crank machine. I felt like I had better control over that um, with the leather. If the needle didn't want to go through, I could guide it a little bit more. So that worked out really well. And so yeah, I'm actually really pleased with it. Um, one thing I will note for next time is I don't want my um, design to go as far down on the bottom part as I made it because you really can't see the bottom part of the design when, the sh when my foot's on there so I wish I made this a little bit narrower but that's okay it, it'll still it still looks good and yeah it'll work I need to clip the seams right here because it's a little bit rippling here but I think I can go ahead and do the other slipper real quick and get that done all right so I got both shoes turned inside out I have two inner soles that I made with um, one layer of thin leather and then two layers of cotton wool batting to kind of give it some cushion. And then I have this silk that I'm going to somehow attach to this. So what I think I'm going to do is just fold it over and stitch these two halves together because the needle does not want to go through this leather. And just do it as smoothly as I can, cutting the silk where I need to not to create bulk. And then hopefully have a nice covered sole that I can then stick into here and whip to these edges here. Alright, I think we're on our last step. So what I'm going to do now is I have my inner soles that are not very pretty, but on this side they are. I'm going to stick them into the shoe, start at the center back I think, and stitch them in all the way through. I had to turn the shoe when I get to the top part. But then once this gets in, I think the shoes are done. So yeah, last step.